Hello guys! Today our video will focus on the greedy Colorado beetles, well and a little bit on ants when it comes to the battle. The Colorado potato beetle needs no special introduction, but we'll tell you a little bit about it. It's also known as the potato beetle. This extremely voracious insect in the amount of 20 individuals can destroy a potato bush in 24 hours. The method of dealing with it is either poisoning or a more environmentally friendly method of manual collecting. We've resorted to the second option, especially as we will need them for the video. You may have noticed that the Colorado potato beetle has two stages of existence. In fact, there are more, but we won't go into that. The purpose of the adult beetle is to reproduce, which is exactly what these two are doing. Or these two, although they can't give offspring in this position. Then the egg-laying process comes, which we can see in these shots. Well, and here are the eggs themselves on the leaves, from which in two to three weeks, and sometimes even faster, the beetle will appear. This is the same voracious, always hungry beetle, which destroys crops and causes so much damage to farmers. That's what it looks like. Judging by the speed, it's not surprising at all that they destroy the bushes so quickly. This is what one hour of beetle life looks like on a potato bush. Judging by the behavior of individual insects, the beetle first eats, then rests digesting the food and then starts eating again. Moreover, when it eats, the speed of eating is really high. For the next experiment, let's have a look at the anthill of red forest ants. It is one of the most belligerent representatives of their species. We take Colorado beetles, young and older, and two ants, whose age is unknown. Let's find out how they interact in a confined space. Here are the ants pounced on the young one, but then stay close and talk about something. It's been a long time since they've seen each other. It should be noted that the Colorado potato beetle has an instinct to pretend to be dead in times of danger. It's the lack of movement and resistance that puts ants in a stupor. They just don't know what to do in this situation. They're used to fighting, but there's no resistance. So they start tormenting the adult. As they have amicably taken up, and so amicably they have parted. They come up several times, bite and leave. On the one hand, it is amusing to watch them. On the other hand, there is no action. Let's move on to the next experiment. The Colorado potato beetle eats not only potato leaves, but also other species of solanaceous plants. That's what we're going to test. We pluck one leaf of potato, another nightshade tomato and pepper, and for a change, we'll also take a grape leaf that isn't a nightshade. Next, we move on to gathering a hungry army. We are trying to chip them, but they're holding on tight. We've had to pick each by hand. At the same time, we've done useful agricultural work. By the way, there's a small praying mantis crawling among the beetles. In spite of its size, it can be called as a farmer's assistant. It's been doing a useful job. We put all four leaves in front of the beetles and see what the beetles prefer. Let me remind you, we have a leaf of a grape, a potato, and a pepper. The last three are nightshade crops. Expectedly, the potato leaf is pounced on at once. Even the old beetle eats it. And doesn't it know that this is an activity for the young? Tomato leaf is also attacked. They haven't missed pepper either. Even a grape leaf is tasted. And there is more than one eager, but still potato has attracted much more beetles. It is interesting how they found it by smell. Tomato is not lagging behind, but pepper is still in the outsiders.
let's switch on the time lapse and see which plant turns out to be the most popular. At first, there's the biggest amount of beetles on tomato and potato. There is even more on the tomato, and they're eating this leaf more actively. At some point, the situation has changed. The tomato is abandoned, and the hungriest now are eating mainly the potato leaf. You can see it disappearing literally before your eyes. It's been a little over an hour and we can see the result. This little piece is all that's left of the potato. The second place of picking around takes a tomato leaf. It is bitten off a little both at the edges and in the center. There are some holes there. On the back side of the leaf, the meal continues. The pepper turns out to be the most unpalatable, although one beetle could not be torn off. The grape leaf should not be eaten in theory, but they eat it with approximately the same appetite as pepper leaf. Let's go back to our four sanitarians, the ants, whose diet, as we all know, consists of all possible larvae and insects. So we have two beetles, a young one and an old one. We put them on the anthill and watch how the ants, which are in eternal search, will react to the beetles, which are eternally hungry. The ants rush a whole gang, but the Colorado beetle does not notice them, as if it is like a tank climbing up the grass. But the ants are not going to just give up. Even here they catch up with it. If the big one is still somehow resisting, the young one decides to pretend to be dead again, and it is grabbed and dragged in all directions. To be more precise, they are dragging it into the hole. When they have coped with the young one, they take up the old one, but they can't grab it. They have been bothering with it for a long time until the beetle blows off and crawls away, hiding from the ants in the grass. It's a good tactic, but even here the beetle is caught by an ant. The second attempt is better. The Colorado beetle is more successful and climbs higher on the grass and then runs away. A group of ants couldn't cope with just one beetle. How do the smaller ants survive? They need to eat insects too. Have you known that there are farmer ants? There are farmers who grow their own food. They grow aphids on the trees. That's how they've chosen a cherry tree in our cottage as an improvised farm. Aphids are small, easy to pick and sweet. The only disadvantage is that ants have to travel a long way from the anthill to the place of harvest. But you don't have to scrounge around for food. You go to the farm, get what you need, and go home. And the final confrontation of this video will be a versus of 1,000 warlike ants against 100 voracious Colorado beetles. That's how many we've collected in the process of pest control. If you don't believe there are 100 of them, you're right, there are 99. So we pour the contents onto the anthill and watch. The most unusual thing is that the ants seem to have all run away and hidden somewhere. Are they afraid of such an invasion of the Colorado potato beetle? Or are a few ants crawling from above run for help when they've seen this horde of red beetles? The beetles, meanwhile, do not even think of scattering. Almost the entire group remains in place, only climbs higher. What kind of ambush is this? Here, one beetle gets into a fight with two ants, but in the end, it still manages to escape from the annoying pursuit. 
And here an ant has grabbed a young one, which is several times its size, and drags it, its grasp powerfully with its tentacles. But when a slightly smaller beetle appears, the ant switches to another target without much thought. The main task is to drag it into the burrow and pass it into the clutches of other underground dwellers. And there are still a lot of beetles here, only no one is going after them yet. Here, ants have marked strange behavior. They pull all at once one beetle in different directions, then all turn around and leave. If the beetle has its paws in a blade of grass, it is very difficult for an ant to pull it. But if the victim is curled up in a ball, the ant will drag the beetle into the burrow without much difficulty. The ants become more and more numerous, and they start to annoy the beetles more and more. The method of a few bites, wrapping them up in a ball and rolling them into the burrow works again. The beetles don't even try to defend themselves in an organized way. They only manage to hide collectively, like here, four on a single blade of grass. They hope they won't be found. And at the same time, how friendly the ants act, they grab the beetle and carry it to the burrow. And if it clings to the grass, the others bite it by the paws on these shots, it is very well seen. It is much more difficult to cope with big beetles, you have to act much more ants to succeed. They bite and pull its paws, but cannot overcome it. Now the beetle cannot hide from the pursuit on the grass. At the same time, another company of ants has dragged another young one to the burrow, fiddled with it a little and it's disappeared underground. And another one goes to the underworld. And here an old beetle is dragged in, but it still managed to get out. An hour later, about half the beetles are still on top of the anthill. But there are some Colorado beetles which are able to escape the pursuit and in a fair fight have earned their freedom. But there are just few of them. Most of them want to destroy our potatoes, and they themselves become lunch. That's all for now. Bye-bye.